For this double feature, we'll be taking a look at two malls right across the street from each other near Atlanta. Literally, they're across the street from each other. Alright, Galleria Specialty Shops is more of a pseudo mall, but when I saw pictures of the interior, I just couldn't pass it up. We'll start here and then take a look at Cumberland Mall afterwards. Galleria Specialty Mall started out in life in 1983 and was meant to be an upscale attachment to the Waverly Hotel nearby, which opened just a year before. At the time, this area was the primary retail corridor for the Atlanta region, and this place was pushing to capitalize on that. At first, it was even successful, but when the town center at Cobb opened up, competition was just too much for the Cumberland Mall, which began to flounder, and this would end up harming the Galleria Specialty Mall, which was meant to complement the Cumberland Mall. It also didn't help that the mall didn't have any traditional anchors to speak of, save for a single movie theater. Best I can gather, the mall never stood a chance after that and only had local shops to speak of. The closest thing it had to an anchor, as I mentioned before, was a movie theater. And come around the late 90s and early 2000s, the plan for the mall would be to convert it into convention space, and you'll actually see this manifest on the second floor. However, something weird would happen. The plans would be on hold for the rest of the mall, as there was still business happening inside. So the main floor, which we're on now, has basically been untouched since. The convention can make things very surreal, as it can be full to near bursting during convention events happening in the area, but outside of that, the mall is nearly empty, like the end of the world has occurred and you're among a handful of survivors in a pseudo-apocalyptic setting. But at the same time, you can see the most preserved example of 80s earth tones and mercury vapor greens out there. Can you see why I wanted to cover this place? It's a fly in amber, a time capsule of the 80s. Some people might not like it, some might think it's dated, but I personally love it. Allegedly, the fountains inside the main court are filled and turned on for convention events. Although, looking through the footage in post, all the fountains are filled in and covered into planters. What a shame. We were almost there. Almost. Now, letting my mind wander here... Yeah, let's derail this a bit. Admittedly, I was a bit more curious than I should be, and wondered if Furry Weekend Atlanta ever comes here. I still wouldn't go, but... I was curious, more so than for my own good. Well, for those of you who wanted to trample your oversized paws and uncanny suits all over these vintage floors and flood this dated but classy interior, well, I'm afraid I couldn't find any evidence of this event ever being hosted here. I did, however, find that a tattoo expo, bridal show, and a blade show, among other events, are being hosted here for the year. Now, odd mental imagery aside, there are still a handful of businesses here, but they are few and far in between. And I can already hear some of the more smart-ass comments along the lines of, What businesses? The only ones I saw was a subway! Again, they are few and far in between. And it seems they're sticking around for now. I'm guessing this place still serves a purpose, even in its current state.
I have to imagine they're still able to renew their leases. If those plans to expand the convention center were still on the table, I imagine lease renewal would stop right then and there. And you know what? Before we go, why don't we get a quick look upstairs? Well, it's a little more boring up here, although to be fair, this upper floor had been gutted at one point to make room for the convention center. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but I don't know, it's not doing much for me. I feel like I'm in a different place entirely, actually. I'm also struggling to find any news articles on this place outside of convention events being hosted. As far as I can see as of the making of this video, seems things are just going to continue as is for the Galleria Specialty Shops. And while we're up here, one observation I made. It looked as if I had either just missed a weekend event and they're all cleaning up for it, which is possible since I arrived on a Monday. Or, they're getting set up for some kind of event in the very near future. Though, this was back in August 2022, so... Whatever events were there, are lost on me. And that is the Galleria of Specialty Shops. There's not a lot happening outside of convention events, but man, I am not going to pass up a look at an 80s era mall. I don't care if it's dated. I like it. And it's a damn sight prettier than that depressing gray and blue color scheme that everybody is using. Yeah, I said it. Thanks for having me, Galleria Specialty Shops. But, we're not done yet. Let's go across the street and take a look at the Cumberland Mall.
And now, across the street, stands the Cumberland Mall. This place has had some turbulent history over the years, but what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. And this mall certainly is a survivor. Doesn't mean I have to like it, though, but we'll elaborate as we tour the mall. Cumberland Mall is said to be the first mall with four anchors in Georgia and the second of its kind in the entire southeast at the time. Developed by Crow Carter and Company, Cumberland Mall would open its doors for the first time on August 8, 1973 and would host Riches, Davison's, Sears, and J.C. Penney as its original anchors. A strong lineup back in the day. Cumberland Mall was an immediate hit, with the reported 110 inline stores present at the mall, and the 5200 parking spaces around the mall were constantly jam-packed all day long. It even hosted a mall within a mall concept called Paces Crossing. The mall was also well positioned to take advantage of apartments, as well as a number of business parks nearby. Between sales and community events, the mall performed very respectably over the 70s and 80s. But then, in 1986, the town center at Cobb opened its doors and posed significant competition against the Cumberland Mall. This would then result in a number of tenants closing its doors and then forcing Cumberland Mall to reinvent itself. And in 1989, the mall underwent a significant renovation, bringing forward a new food court. And earlier in 1986, Davison's would get converted into Macy's. Cumberland Mall would enter a period of turbulence over the 90s and 2000s, and in 2003, Macy's would finally close its doors, followed by J.C. Penney just two years later. Cumberland Mall was down two anchors just like that. Macy's would come back to the mall, however, in the form of a merger with Riches. Funny how things work out like that. Early on, Cumberland Mall executed a redevelopment plan to deal with the former Davison's pad and would demolish it to make way for an open-air section full of upscale restaurants like Maggiano's, The Cheesecake Factory, and P.F. Chang's to name a few. Meanwhile, the former J.C. Penney would be demolished to make way for a detached Costco bulk store, and we are near where J.C. Penney once stood. The interior would also get renovated again bringing forward to the look we have today. Although an unlikely plan, this actually worked in the long run, keeping the mall competitive, and it brought it back to relevance. It wasn't perfect, as Kroger announced in 2016 that they were axing plans to come to the Cumberland Mall, and Sears was undergoing issues of its own. Their problems would come to a head in 2018, when Sears closed its doors in November of 2018. But once again, redevelopment would come to fix this issue, gutting the Sears store to make way for a Dick's Sporting Goods and a Planet Fitness in 2020. Yeah. Not even 2020 could stop this mall, despite the hits it took that year. Today, the mall is still successful, albeit bland. I can't say I'm a fan of the neutral, almost sterile aesthetic that dominates the mall interior, 
But I guess architecture doesn't matter when you have a strong interior lineup mingled among a hybrid lifestyle center. New apartments appear to be under construction on the south end of the mall lot, and despite a number of problems regarding fights and shoplifting, the mall just keeps on trucking. Only time will tell if anything major is going to happen. Regarding the mall interior, I can't say I'm a big fan of white and gray. It's too neutral, too sterile. Although with that in mind, I can say that it's better than gray and blue, which is fast becoming my most hated color scheme due to how depressing it makes everything look. Now, with that in mind, the exterior of Cumberland Mall doesn't look too bad actually. In fact, in the open air section, I did find a fountain. And fountains make everything a little bit better. And if you behave, we'll see it at the end. Something I find a little humorous while looking at all of this is that Cumberland Mall survived and it's doing just fine. Meanwhile, it's alleged that the Cobb Galleria is beginning to decline. I'm presuming Cumberland Mall is just better positioned for, well, everything. You have the aforementioned convention center and hotel across the street. You're within walking distance if you live in any of the nearby apartments. You have a crowded retail corridor it's surprisingly walkable outside, and it appears to be doing just fine with a nearby bus stop and transfer hub. This mall has a lot going for it, and the only real problem I have with it is that it's in Atlanta. Now, ignoring everything else, the true reason I dislike Atlanta is simple. Way too many people. I'm more of a small town guy. Of course, you do need people to keep them all going, and Cumberland Mall has plenty of those. I'm not quite sure what the future holds for the Cumberland Mall, especially with hazy speculation on Atlanta's future, but I doubt it's going to take a dive just yet. Honestly, I believe its future is still bright, as it appears the mall is more than capable of adapting to changing times. In fact, I am kind of curious to see what its next move will be. Aren't you? Oh, just me? Okay. And that just about wraps things up for the Cumberland Mall, and by extension, the Galleria Specialty Mall across the road. An interesting contrast, isn't it? I wonder if those that frequent the Cumberland Mall even know about the Galleria Specialty Shops. You'd be surprised how many people whose heads that'll go over. But for now, as we exit and look for the Cumberland Mall's fountain, thanks for having me, Atlanta. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt, wishing you and the Galleria Specialty Mall and the Cumberland Mall farewell and good luck.
I was ready for about an hour and a half of trying to reconfigure my microphone for this file again. And all of a sudden, it just works on its own. Okay, DaVinci, you do you.